Welcome to Laurie's Little Studio. I'm Laurie and today I have this in front of me. Today is walking foot day and I went shopping for fabrics that I, th I felt like would be a good sample for us to look at for reasons why we would be using a walking foot. There are basically three to four good reasons why you would use a walking foot. The way the sewing machine works is you have your presser foot coming forward toward you and then underneath it are the feed dogs and they're running like this as you're sewing or more like this. So they're kind of grabbing the fabric and pulling it and you're pushing and it's, it's this situation where you can have some slipping. A lot of times with two layers of medium weight, soft, lightweight, even some heavyweight fabric, you can get away with just your everyday presser foot. But the walking foot has the equivalent as the feed dogs are, you know, pulling the fabric through on the bottom plate of your sewing machine down here. This foot is doing the same thing on the top of the fabric. So it pulls it through and it has this right in here, this is the bottom of the foot, that helps to pull the fabric through as it's moving through the sewing machine. I'm clearly struggling for words, but anyway, so when you're, if you're stitching two layers of fabric together, you could have any one of these, and these are homespun, which I'll get into in just a minute, and this is a print, and I just bought a quarter of a yard of this print stripe fabric. You can tell it's a print because it's whitish on the back, which means that this color was basically printed or sprayed onto a piece of white cotton fabric. Oftentimes, not I shouldn't say often, sometimes when that happens, when this is a, a printed on fabric design, you've got your straight lines and it is on the straight grain of the fabric, but sometimes it can be off just a little bit. And if it's off just a little bit, your eye might not catch it, but your sewing machine will definitely catch it. If you're, if you're trying to stitch something together and you want everything to be lined up so that, like with a plaid, you know, you want your seams to be lined up so that it looks like one solid piece of fabric, it really helps to use the walking foot on your sewing machine. Okay, so we've talked about the printed designed fabric. So one of the reasons that you might want to use a walking foot on your sewing machine is, let's just say you're a beginner. You're just starting your journey sewing and you're doing straight line quilting. That would be a perfect example of when you would want to use the walking foot. There are many well-seasoned expert quilters who will stitch their quilts with a walking foot. And that's because of the three layers of fabric. You've got a top layer that would be resting underneath your sewing machine foot. You have a middle layer of, of uh, batting that's just kind of floating around between this fabric and this fabric. And then you've got this fabric, which is on the bottom, on top of your feed dogs. That piece of batting in the center between the two will slip and slide and slip and slide if it isn't pinned or, or um, hand-stitched to hold it in place while you're sewing it, while you're quilting. And that can often cause your fabric to slip and slide and just be a mess. Also for binding, binding is a, another good reason why you would want to use a walking foot. There's, you know, it's that quilt sandwich 
And I know I'm talking about quilting a lot, but that's the general use for these. Although plaid is a big part of using a walking foot because of the fact that it will hold everything together. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so let's get this untied. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I was hoping that they would have something like this, and I was surprised to find it. All right, it, um, these are never on sale, and this particular piece is a five-piece fat quarter bundle. Um, it was $9.99, which honestly, I should just say, just say $10, but you can see the prices right there, $9.99. And it is an even, or excuse me, it is a homespun fabric, which means it will be the same on both sides because it is woven. So we have our little solid red. I wanted to go with red because it's we're coming up on Valentine's Day. And while I'm not huge on Valentine's Day, it's after my birthday. So I always associate Valentine's Day with my birthday. I've done that since I was a little kid. Okay, and then we have something that looks like ticking. And it also is the same on both sides. And here is this little gingham that we'll be using for part of our project. I'm a sucker for gingham. Um, it, there's so many things you can do with it, not to mention the fact that you can also smock because you can pleat this fabric. You can uh, stitch it by hand and pleat it like you're using dots, um, iron-on pleating dots, if you don't have a pleating machine. Um, and the the design itself, um, once you get it pleated and then smocked, is just so cute. And there's so many options, and I'm going off into a rabbit hole there. Okay, so here is the opposite of, the, the kind of the mirror image, I guess, of this one. Yeah ish. So it's like an x-ray ticking fabric. It doesn't feel like ticking. It's not as um, stiff as ticking. It's very soft, pretty lightweight cotton. But again, all of these are a homespun. And I love that. So there we have all of those in a fat quarter size, which if you're not familiar with a fat quarter where it says homespun fat quarter bundle, um, does it say, oh yeah. So on there it will say 18 inches by 21 inches. I don't know if it's gonna focus. My camera's so funny these days. I have to like fiddle with it. There we go, okay. And you can see the price as well over there on the right. Let's, we've looked at the fabric talked about the fabric, and now we're going to install. I'm gonna to have to use my phone. So let me get that set up, and I'll be right back. All right, I, okay, I have set it up on my phone. This post over here is the boom that my big camera, huge, big monster, sits up on over my head. But I feel like this will give you a better perspective while I'm trying to show you how to install your Bernina 1080 special walking foot. So, it comes in a box that, at least for me, for George, my sewing machine, I've had George for a little over 20 years now, bought him brand new, got this with it, and this is the box that was included with my purchase. It, at the time, it was $89.95. I don't know if my phone is recording backwards. I suspect it is. Um, but that's uh, the price right there is $89.95. That says Bernina. Included in this box is your set of instructions. I already took my needle out of my sewing machine. So that's important. You need to remove your needle. And if I'm going to keep my needle... I just go ahead and, and stick it in the styrofoam. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to have to think, where did I put it? 
these for me sewing machine needles can be kind of like fiddly if i'm going to keep it that means that it's got less than 20 hours of sewing time on it and i don't want to mix it in with other needles and i don't want to think to myself oh my gosh which needle was it so i just stick it in the styrofoam and then because i'll be putting it back in to sew with the foot that's why i do it that way i also took my thread out of my sewing machine and I removed my bobbin and bobbin case. So that's all in one piece. The reason I do that is because I find it less um, in the way. I'll just say it that way. Okay, so what you have is you have the walking foot itself. And this is what it looks like this way. This is what it looks like this way. It says... Bernina on both sides. This is the top. That's a hole. I don't know if you can see it, but right in there is a hole. Mine has got some miles on it. You can see that the paint has kind of been scuffed off on both that part. And I think there's another spot right here where it's been a little scuffed off. This is the bottom. And this, these are the little grabby feet that come through. And I don't want to force anything, but yeah, they, they just, there, you can see them there. They're silicone feeling, um, so they're not jagged like your feed dogs are, but they will grab the fabric and pull it through. Okay, so there's the foot itself, and then you have a right and a left seam guide. So you can either have it with the seam guide on the outside over here i can't tell if that's yeah it is obviously okay and then you could have it on the inside which is really kind of where i use it the most it's on the inside you can't have both you can only have one of these at a time and then this little piece right here they call it a u-shaped piece i believe it fits on the back of the foot into this hole right here that holds the um, seam guide in place. Now you can use your your walking foot without this. You don't have to use these seam guides, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with. Okay, so we'll put, this has a hole here and a hole on the opposite side. And then there's this little screw that just kind of tamps down. So we have to have this in place. I generally just hold it with my left hand like so and then I'm going to use this side seam guide so you line up the holes there's one that matches up on the foot with what am I doing okay with the one on this U shaped piece like that and on the opposite side as well. So you just kind of hold it there with your hand and then just feed this seam guide through to the other side. I need to get this screw out of the way. Okay, right. And then it will come out on the other side. So see, like so. And you're gonna kind of want to put that in a spot where you can figure out that's where you want it. If you want it to, if your seam is way past this plate, then put it way out here somewhere, but you can adjust it once you've got it installed. So now you just tighten down this little screw, not too hard, just enough to kind of hold it in place. Just a little finger tight like that. Okay, all right, now I'm going to put this back over here so it's not in the way. And then you remove this foot by raising up this little piece right here. I'm going to move the phone, sorry about that. So this piece right here, you're just going to pop that up, so like that. That disengages this piece right here and your foot just pops off of the post. I have found that sliding my 
Oh, drop your feed dogs. So sorry about that. Yeah, so this right here, these are your feed dogs. And you need to drop those. I'm trying to get it where you can see it. So there are a couple of things that you need to be made aware of. The number one thing I want to say before I go any further is do really try to remind yourself not to start sewing. Like if you get everything lined up and you think you're good to go, please wait and do a check because you can do irreparable damage to your sewing machine. But there's this little piece right here and what pray tell is this weird little, let's see if I can get it to there. What is What could this little thing be and what does it do and where does it go? We need to have this fork fit over this piece right here that's the I think it's the needle clamp this little piece right here the way this choreography works is I'm going to do it in reverse so we lift up this right here which will drop the foot this piece right here and then we're going to back it off of the fork off of the needle clamp and we're going to go to the right and remove the foot now to try to put this back on where you guys can see what I am doing it is a motion of left right center so we're going to come in from the left over here slowly and carefully I'm just going to hold my thumb under this fork so this is my thumb right here all right i am going to tip the foot to the right so that the post will go down into this cone shaped area just like that and then i'm going to tip the foot to the inside of my sewing machine and wiggle literally wiggle until the fork hooks over the top of it's twisted there we go of the needle clamp so i came in from the left i tipped it to the right and then i kind of twisted it wiggly this way and that helped the fork attach to the needle clamp. Now I'm lining it up. I'm just going to put my finger under there to hold it so I can see if this is on and this is on. And then I'm going to drop this attachment thing right here. And now my foot is on. If this fork is not on the needle clamp, this foot will not work and if you try to make it work without that part being attached you will damage your sewing machine you'll break your needle all kinds of awful things will happen all right now i'm sorry i'm going to try to put my needle on using my right hand which i have a hard time doing make sure that the needle is well seated and then tighten it down into place Okay, and then double check and make sure everything looks right. Fork attached to the needle clamp. This bar is down inside this cone-shaped receptacle. This is pushed down so that my foot is attached. This is here, and if I lower my foot, the only thing I have left to do is raise my feed dogs, and I wanna do that before I put my needle on um, because if something is wrong and my needle goes down, it could break. I just want to make sure that everything else is working first. I just put caution ahead of everything. So I'm going to do this, raise up my feed dogs. Yeah, they're up. Okay. All right. And now I can thread my machine. So we'll take care of that. 
we go. Everything is in place. Now, we have all of our lovely fabric over here. And I'm going to go back to overhead for this portion. And then I will film um, on my phone again when we're running it through the sewing machine. So let me set that up. I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're back overhead. Uh, look at this silliness. I literally have my phone crabbed onto an old um, Joby, I think it is. But whatever. Whatever works. These scissors may actually cut this fabric, and I'm only going to do small sections. So we don't need this one because we're not matching stripes on this one. Um, I might use a piece of this. I'm not sure how well this shows up, but yeah, we don't really have to go too crazy matching on a tiny gingham like this. So that would be a good practice if you, if you were interested in figuring that out. I just have to decide which of these two I want to use. Ooh, the, this one, I think. And we'll use the bigger gingham. And we're going to start with this uh, Brother Sister Design Studio print stripe. So let me see. First things first. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I will cut here. I should be using my rotary cutter for this, but I'm not. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I were sewing something with these two pieces of fabric, I needed to seam them together. There are several different ways, of course, if I cut these in half and I was doing a, a quilt block or something, that would the rules would all change. But if I want this piece of fabric to line up with this piece of fabric, what I have to do is hold it because I need these to match, right? I want this one to match all the way down. So when you are sewing with stripes, plaids, one-way designs, any of those things, be prepared to use a significantly higher number of pins or uh, clips. I'm going to use pins because they're right here. And I'm stitching it so that it will open up this way and be matched. Because this would drive me crazy. So we're going to match it up. And then, uh, honestly, a lot of really talented, amazing sewists will stitch it by hand because you have so much more control. You can easily stitch something like this by hand and then bring it to the machine. It's not going to slip and slide. But I am matching up each stripe as carefully as I can. And this is when you'll find out if you have fabric that was printed askew. So if it was not lined up correctly when it was printed, there will be a difference. And you can manipulate it too. You can also wash and steam the piece that you're trying to match with the other piece and pull and stretch and get it to, to straighten itself out. 
sometimes. Sometimes it just will not. In fact, sometimes it will get so pulled out of shape that it will twist. So you'll end up, let's say you're making a pair of slacks. It will twist so that your seam that's supposed to be running down the outside of your leg will be fine up on the thigh area and then round about the knee, the seam will end up wrapping around your calf. Fabric can be just infuriating sometimes. What's gonna happen is when I stitch this, the walking foot feet right here will grab as it's coming through as will the metal feed dogs on the bottom part. So the top piece of fabric and the bottom piece of fabric will be coming th through the sewing machine, being pulled through exactly the same. I have put my sewing machine in the needle down sewing position which means every time I stop sewing, my needle will be in my fabric acting like a third hand, kind of helping me out um, as I sew. Okay, and drop your foot down, make sure it's down, and then start stitching slowly. The last time I sewed on this machine, I used a huge seam allowance, or stitch length, so I need to clear that out, put it back in the default, okay? Remove pins as I sew. I certainly don't want to stitch over pins. Alrighty. Alright, and I'm going to move my camera here. I don't have any idea if this is going to help, um, but maybe it will. I don't know if you can see the moving parts, but these right here, they're moving down and holding this top fabric. Let me move this pin out of the way. Let's just see, this is, there's white thread in the bobbin, there you go, and there's pinkish thread in the needle. So let me undo this, and we're going to see how we did. finger press this down so that it... Okay, so there's that seam. My pressing made it look off. Let me do it a different way. That can happen, you know? That's weird. I don't have my iron turned on, so there we go. Much better. Okay, so there's the seam.
and it's actually just the one green stripe. All the rest of them are perfect. So that may have been printed weirdly, but this is perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. And then there's just a hair. Oh, I'll hold it up here. Just a little extra on the side there. So if you were super picky, you might want to pull these and do it again. But I don't see how. I think it must be this green stripe. Because this is perfect, this is perfect, this is perfect. The white is slightly shifted over. But perfect, perfect, and perfect. So I think it's just these two here in the center that are slightly off. But honestly, with a print, I am not at all surprised. Not at all. I do like the way this looks. I might make this into something. Um, side note, we have all been in our homes this winter a little bit more than we might have been in our homes in winters past due to the fact that across the nation we have had crazy winter weather in the United States. I have found that my home is, I don't know, it's dustier, it's more stale. Um, being cold, I'm not real comfortable opening the front door and the back, you know, letting some air through. Although I did do that on New Year's, like between, it was midnight. So at midnight, I opened up the front door and the back door, which are opposite of each other, and just let some fresh air in and some old air out. That was my ode to 2023 and 2022, actually. But why am I telling you this? Well, I'm going to make some charcoal, activated charcoal pads that I can just place around my house. They absorb all kinds of bad things. So if you want to read about what I'm talking about, there's a lot of good information on the internet about using activated charcoal. People will put them little pads in their cars, closets, bathrooms, kitchens, um, make one and put it in the fridge, um, put it in areas where you have a lot of people activity in your home, like maybe if you have a great room right off your kitchen, um, you might have just extra air that needs to be purified and that activated charcoal uh, really does do a good job. So I'm going to be making, I have the charcoal and I'm just going to be making some like sachets, I guess I should say. Um, and this would be cute in my decor to just have maybe in a bowl. I could do two of them. Um, they don't need to be huge. And when you think maybe, okay, I've had it for a couple months. It's surely done its thing. Take it out into your garden and dump it into the soil and kind of stir it around in there. It's so good for your plants. I'm actually using it as a top dress for my indoor olive tree. And another quick side note, when you do a top dress for a house plant, Wherever the stem or the stalk or the trunk or whatever is, don't cover that up with your top dress, especially with olive trees. They like their roots to kind of be exposed a little bit. So I just made a ring and left the trunk and the root crown alone. But I do have some charcoal around my, my olive tree. Um, and I, I just love using a product like that. So that's probably what this is going to turn into. One or two of those little charcoal bag things. Um, might make some for the cars. You can put them, if you make them out of a fabric like this, a woven fabric, you can put them in the bottom of your, your grocery bags that you take with you. You know, if you've made a, a tote for groceries. Just throw one in the bottom and it will kind of help deal with some of the issues that you might have with your groceries. Okay, so we, we've done a stripe. 
um, and you can tell it would be basically the same thing with this. You're just going to line it up with your you know, stripes together and do heavy duty pinning all the way, you know, making sure that these are all carefully lined up and then when you open it up after you've stitched it with the walking foot, everything will be perfect. So I don't think I need to do it again with, with this, but we will do the gingham. Now, gingham is fun, but it will drive you crazy if you've not stitched with it before. Because you think, okay, there's two colors. Well, no, there's not. You have the blend right here. You have the white. You have the darker color. So it's one, two, three. One, two, three. And that's generally true of any gingham, unless it's a two-color gingham, like a blue and yellow mixed. Then you're into a whole new realm of how many colors are there, what am I actually matching. So keep that in mind as well. And I'm going to cut a couple pieces of this, and we're going to match it up. Now you can see right here that this is, whoa, it's not, oh no, you can't. <laughs> Oh, my word, Laurie. Okay, see? See how this is just a swoop? It's so off. We're going to straighten that up. Let me show you how to do it. Grab a pin. So over here, we've, we're have on the short end of this massive swoop. See, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're going to start over here on the bigger and bigger, bigger end. And we're going to pull a thread. I'm sorry I'm swooching you in and swooching you out. That's a word. All right. So we're going to take a pin, something sharp. I have a glass head pin here. And I'm going to pull a thread. Just pull it right out. About a half inch from the cut edge or the the edge of the fabric over here. Take your just take your time. You'll get one. It just it just takes a minute. And you just want one thread. Okay, there I've got my thread right there. And I'm going to try to pull Yeah, okay. And you can see it's kind of gathering up as I pull, see, there, and this is one of those things that you're going to do, but you want to be kind of careful because you don't want to break it. If you do, it's okay. You can pull up another one, but I usually just kind of hold it like this. I'm trying to figure this out where I can get, okay, there. So we're just going to pull, hold it, and then slide the fabric along that, fab, that piece of fabric fiber. And you're going to be real surprised where this ends up. All right, I broke it. So get that pin again. Usually you can see it or amazingly you can feel it. You can feel where it just feels different from your other fabric when you've got that thread pulled. The missing thread is clearly missing. Okay, it's a little bit on the weak side now because it's been pulled. So, 
I can see the whole point of doing that is you want to be able to see where you pulled the thread and I can see it so now I can take my scissors it's it's like a faint line yep there it is right there and I can cut I'm probably gonna have to get my actual yeah I need my actual fabric scissors I'll be right back and you can feel it like I said it makes the fabric feel different when that thread is missing. I do not recommend tearing homespun fabric. I would never do that. If you're curious why I say that and you have some as a like a uh, just a piece of cabbage leftover fabric, give it a go and see what happens. It probably will surprise you. This is why when you buy fabric at a fabric store and you see them open out either your plaid fabric or your gingham fabric and cut, that's why they do it. Otherwise, when it's folded over in half, they can't tell where they're cutting and they end up with something that looks this and you pay the price so now that it's been cut it's nice and straight ish and here it is right here so now I can cut my own and again I'm not going to double it over because I'm not going to be able to cut both only what I see only what I see will I be able to cut straight so I'm going to leave it open and I'm going to just cut two small pieces. So I have two pieces of red and white gingham and I need to join them together and I need for the gingham to stay in alignment. All right, let's see what happens. I'm gonna use this as my seam. Make sure it's perfect. Slide that over. Okay. Don't stitch over any pins. Sorry about my arm. Press this seam allowance flat. That seems to make a difference in the way it looks. Okay, there we go. My stitching is off a little bit down here. I got more, I took more of a, a seam allowance, but up here they're perfectly matched. So I could just trim that off if I wanted to. But I'm going to use this as well as the other one as a charcoal pouch, sachet, uh, whatever I want to call that. Please excuse the dog toy squeaking in the background. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. So, I mean, aside from being a mean dog mommy, which I'm not going to do. So I have about a teaspoon of activated charcoal down in there. And I just folded the top over. And now I'm just, I've got four strands of thread on my needle. I don't know if you can see it, but there's four. And I'm gonna start on the seam over here. And I'm going to put the knot on the inside. So I've, managed to put 
push the needle down and I've got the knot where it'll be hidden inside the little bag. There is a long thread that I need to cut, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to straight stitch, running stitch, whatever we want to call this, across like so. I want it to be easy enough that when it comes time to either repurpose the bag or replace the charcoal, I'm not going to have a big problem getting the charcoal out. My hands of charcoal on them. But as you can see now, all I have to do is just pull this up, which closes the top. just for my personal use in my house. If I were going to make this as a gift for someone, I would do it so differently. But considering the fact that this was just a completely different video. Okay, so I'm just gonna go pop this. I'm just gonna go pop this on the counter in my kitchen, that activated charcoal will um, easily work in this little bag. It's a fairly open weave, it's homespun, so it's a fairly open little weave. And see how they work. I mean, I've been reading about the benefits and I feel like it. there's no harm. I have a big bag of activated horticultural charcoal. I do not believe briquettes have the same effect. So that's something I should probably put out there. But anyway, so that's that. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope that you were able to get some information that you can use about this particular walking foot. Please leave a question in the comment section if you need a little bit more instruction on this. I will try to do my best to answer questions. This is the first little seam that we did, and I think I mentioned this green one is off a little bit, and I believe that has to do with the print, uh, but I feel like it's a pretty good match, and the walking foot definitely helped. So, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.